I had to check something when it came to Purman. Who was the comics creator who got the most Famicom games? Well, I counted them up and the winner was still Akira Toriyama, but all seven of his Famicom games were based on the same series. Fujiko F. Fujio, on the other hand, had two games based on Doraemon, two games based on Purman, a game based on Obake no Kyutaro, and one based on Kitaretsu Daihyaka. So, six games based on four different series. Not as many games, but covering a lot more ground. The concept of Perman is that a young boy was visited by an alien superhero, Superman originally, Birdman in later versions, and the boy was given a costume. When he put it on, believe it or not, he was walking on air, and he proceeds to fight crime along with the assistance of other people who have received super suits from aliens. The game has a subtitle, Enban o Tori Kaise, or Replace the Disc, which is pretty much all of the plot the game has. The disc was taken from the hero that gave Perman his suit, and Perman fights his way through a whole bunch of his enemies. There are seven stages in Perman, but they are multi-part affairs, and the boss fights take a very long time to play out, which makes Perman actually a fairly long game. It's an action platformer where A jumps and B attacks, and for some reason Perman can't fly even though he can in the comic. You do gain a bit of height for your jumps if you walk in a direction for a few seconds first. On every stage there are blocks you can destroy, and there are a ton of power-ups to pick up. The fist, the ray gun, and the POW symbol are all effectively the same thing. They upgrade your attacks so that you shoot something. You also auto-fire these attacks by holding down the B button. As far as I could tell, the differences between these attacks are cosmetic. The ray gun turns the things that you hit into animals, for example. But since everything dies in one hit to you, and all of the attacks just shoot straight out in front of you, there really isn't a difference between them. There's also items to recover health, ice cream to give you back one point, and cake to give you back five, and the P icons are used during boss battles. On two of the stages, you can play as Booby the Monkey. They also got a superhero outfit, and Booby has a banana as a unique power-up. If he collects bananas, then a swirl of bananas surround him to destroy any enemies that come close. You can also find a Purman mask that will make you invincible for a few moments, and of course, there are plenty of 1-ups. In fact, there might be too many 1-ups. If you explore carefully and fully, you won't have any trouble earning enough lives to carry you through the game. Every stage has a door you can enter where you play a mini-game. On the odd number stages, you have to spot the differences between the image on the left and the image on the right. On the even number stages, you play Whack-A-Mole and have to strike the villain on the head while not hitting Purman. I actually found the whack-a-mole to be a little bit rough, since there are six positions rather than four, and getting on the side ones doesn't always go smoothly. If you overcome these mini-games, you get an extra life, and you also get something that will give you an advantage in the boss battle. Which brings me to those fights. Because they're not fights, you play a board game against the boss. I saw the board game being described as Sugoroku-like, and while it is a roll-and-move where the outcome is essentially random, that's really where the similarities end. The distinctive thing about Sugorok is that there's a random event every turn. And that's not the case here. All of the squares, except one, have a predetermined outcome. When a blank square is landed on, then the character performs an attack. If ice cream or cake is landed on, then health is recovered. Landing on the P is something special. You use one of the P's that you collected during the platforming stage and call in another character who will perform an attack that might do some additional damage. If the enemy lands on a P, then he just takes one of yours. The POW is just a regular attack that does more damage. For the question marks, one of three random events occurs. Either you lose a turn, your opponent loses a turn, or you make your opponent roll and move backwards. That's the only way to back up in this game. On your turn, you can only go forward, and the only real choices that you have are which branch to take. There are two ways to win. Either you knock out all of the opponent's health, or you reach the goal square first. And obviously you lose if your opponent knocks out all of your health, or they reach the goal. If that happens, you lose a life, and you have to play the stage over from the beginning. The best thing you can do is just get the item from the doorway on your way to the boss. 
Sometimes it'll double your health bar in the boss battle. And sometimes it's a die that will only roll fives or sixes. Beyond that, the only real choice you have are those branching paths. And there you're basically deciding if you want to try to go faster, or if you need health or the possibility of knocking out your opponent before they get to the goal. Honestly, the boss battles are not that good. Since you have effectively no control there, it just winds up feeling unfair, especially the later boss battles. But even though the boss fights aren't great, the stages themselves are really good. Pretty much every stage has something distinctive and clever about it. Like on stage 2, all of the enemies are invisible, but you can see them if you dump paint on them. Or on this stage, we are climbing a giant tree as you're attacked by ninjas. There's also balloons that you can pump up and ride. And on this stage, the big blocks will move to try to crush you if you free them from their spot. There's a lot of really fun touches to the level design here. As I mentioned, Perman does get a sequel on the Famicom. But these Famicom games are the only Perman video games out there. In Japan, Perman does seem to have its fans, but not an enormous number of them. I think the fact that the game came out about five years after the cartoon stopped airing probably had something to do with that. My own view is that I like Perman, but more as a game to chill with. It's not too difficult, and then when you hit the bosses, there's really not a whole lot you do there. I do wish it didn't send you back to the beginning to replay the stage when you lost on the board game, though. This might not be a top-tier game, but it's one that I happen to like. <laughs>